Today we're going to learn about photosynthesis and cell respiration and it can be explained easily by this diagram. Here you have the light energy uh, from the sun which is taken by producers or autotrophs, uh, the plants and algae and some bacteria. Uh, basically they take it in their bodies and with carbon dioxide they, they convert it into glucose and they also make oxygen. We eat the glucose and we breathe in the oxygen why do we do that? So that we can actually use that oxygen to break down glucose and take that energy out of the glucose so we can actually use it. And once that energy is out, we store it in ATP, and that's the main one that we use. That is the usable form of energy. And when we break it down, we also release some heat energy, so you can see that here. And we also uh, convert that uh, broken glucose into carbon dioxide and water and we breathe the carbon dioxide out and then the plants can take it in again because that's one of their ingredients uh, for photosynthesis. So again you can see how all the equations are almost like if it's backwards, right? You have water coming in, CO2 coming in, and light and they give us glucose and oxygen. Those two things go in into our cells and in the mitochondria we make ATP, water, and carbon dioxide. And then the cycle goes around and around. So hopefully that can connect both of those concepts. Things to remember, food molecules, proteins, carbohydrates, sugars, lipids, and nucleic acids, that's what food molecules are. Photosynthesis is uh, the sunlight energy is converted into chemical energy in the bonds of food molecules. And cellular respiration, all we're doing is releasing the energy stored in the food molecules. Again, fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. And we're breaking them down, hopefully in the mitochondria, where we get the most energy. Again, so photosynthesis is a process of making glucose and other sugars. And um, we're making glucose, again, and it happens in the chloroplast. Here again we have autotrophs. Um, these are the ones that produce the food. They're the ones that do photosynthesis. Um, they're the autotrophs or also called producers. And they tend to be green usually. Here you have some protists that have uh, chloroplasts in them. Here's some bacteria that also have chloroplasts. Um, plants, trees, fruits, vegetables, all those have chloroplasts in them. And you have again algae which produce it for the water um, organisms, so in oceans and lakes. And over here we have heterotrophs. Now they don't make their own food. They have to eat the autotrophs or eat the producers. So they're consumers, these heterotrophs. So where does this all happen? Again, it happens in the leaves and their structures called um, chloroplasts in the plant cells. So let's look at what a chloroplast looks like. It all happens right here. This is the most important part which is called the thylakoid membrane. So you have these thylakoids that look like pancakes. A stack of thylakoids is called granum, but really it's happening right here on the membrane of the thylakoid. That's where there is chlorophyll, a very important pigment molecule which actually traps the sunlight. So what is it that when we see a plant it looks green? Well, it's really all the light from the all the light energy all the different wavelengths, all the different colors really make up white light. And that light shines on the chloroplast. And the chlorophyll traps in all the all that light, except um, it will reflect back green. So every other light frequency or light color is absorbed and used for photosynthesis, except green. Green bounces back to your eye. That's why you see it green. So what's happening in the chloroplast? Let's just look here. There's two reactions. One's called the light dependent reactions. We call them the light reactions. And then you have the other reaction called the light independent reactions. And the light dependent, as you guessed, it depends on light. You have light and you also have water uh, come in. And the water is split to make oxygen. And this again happens in the thylakoid membranes where you have the chlorophyll which absorbs the light. And all that light energy, which is unusable to us, but to the plants, actually gets converted and stored. That light energy is stored in these very important molecules, NADPH and ATP. Think of them like batteries. We're charging them with the sunlight. And now they have that energy from the sunlight in chemical form. And why do we want NADPH and ATP batteries? Well, because they're going to power the next reaction called the light independent, also called the 
dark reactions, and also called the Calvin cycle. I know it's a lot of names, but just try to hang in there. And so all these reactions are basically um, these batteries are going to power the conversion of carbon dioxide into sugars. And you're wondering, okay, where's glucose? Doesn't it make glucose? Yeah, it does, usually. So these sugars can be converted into glucose, which is mostly what happens. But not, all, not only that, it also can get converted to other things like proteins, carbohydrates, nucleic acids, and lipids. So the chloroplast really makes not only just food for itself, but also makes all those other building blocks, those molecules of life that the plant needs to grow and to reproduce and to survive. So again, what happens to the sugar? They're converted to monosaccharides, amino acids, fatty acids, and nucleic acids. Uh, sometimes if there's a lot of sugar, it is stored as starches. Remember that? Which are those polysaccharides. Or the sugar that is made might uh, be needed right away. And so it'll go into the mitochondria. Don't forget that plants also have a mitochondria. They not only make the food, but they got to break it down with the mitochondria to get that energy from it. So that'll happen there too. And so we can put this equation together really easily. Um, just look at what goes in. What goes in is always on the left side of the equation. And here you have water, light, and CO2. Those are the arrows that went in. So that all, that's all on the left side. So you have carbon dioxide, water, and light all on the left side. And then what comes out? Well, oxygen and glucose or sugars and we have that coming out on the right side which are the products so the reactants are the things that go in and the products are the things that come out or are produced and we could put in the words carbon dioxide plus water plus light gives us sugars and oxygen way to remember this is just think about what you give a plant you gotta give it water you gotta give it light and carbon dioxide I mean common sense and then it's gonna make sugars that we can eat from the fruits um, and oxygen that we breathe. So just remember those quick tips. Now we got cellular respiration, which is breaking glucose. So remember, photosynthesis made the glucose, but now it's time to actually break it so we can get the energy out and use it for um, our regular activities. And so here I have a picture of the mitochondria, also called the powerhouse of the cell. And remember, a quick way to remember mitochondria makes energy is, think of the mighty mitochondria, mighty energy field. Okay, it makes energy. And here we're breaking it. The first step um, in breaking down glucose is a step called glycolysis. Don't get confused. Just remember glucose is a six carbon molecule. And one thing we have to do is just split it down the middle and cut it. And once we cut it, that's called glycolysis. We get two three carbon molecules and and each one is called pyruvate so we get two pyruvates or pyruvic acid is what they call it sometimes it's just the very first step that must happen you gotta like cut it right in half and you get a little bit of ATP only two ATP from this first step now the next step is very important um, it depends on the presence of oxygen if there's oxygen then we enter these pyruvates will actually go into the mitochondria through some reactions called the oxidation reactions or the Krebs cycle and and basically that um, pyruvate will be broken down further all the way to get 36 ATP which is a lot of energy and that's called aerobic respiration with oxygen we can get a lot of ATP that's what we prefer and again when we break down the pyruvate we also get carbon dioxide water and the ATP Okay, if no oxygen is available, then we go through anaerobic respiration, also called fermentation. And in plants, yeast, and uh, those organisms, the process is, is will actually make ethyl alcohol, which is alcohol. And in animals or bacteria, um, the process will actually make what's called the uh, lactic acid. And this... This um, acid actually builds up in our muscles when we go in intense activities like running and we're not breathing properly or we're just, it's just an in intense activity where you don't have enough time to get the oxygen in, in you. And so your body will, will convert this pyruvate into lactic acid which makes your muscles sore and eventually your enzymes shut down and then you just kind of 
just stop. I mean, there's a point where there's your muscles get so sore. It could be dangerous because it can destroy your enzymes, and we need them for our um, reactions to be to be uh, happening very fast so we can survive. So in this process, um, just the main thing is you don't really get ATP, no ATP at all, but you do get something called NADP, or sorry, NAD+, which will be cycled back in here and will allow you to do glycolysis one more time to make two ATP. So even though nothing is really created here in terms of energy or ATP, um, we do make NAD+, which can keep this cycle going for a little bit to make some ATP. But eventually you want to start breathing um, enough oxygen again where you can start breaking down the pyruvate fully in the mitochondria, which gives us the most ATP energy. So now you know why it's important to really breathe in a lot of oxygen. We breathe in a lot of oxygen. When you work out, you'll be able to get more ATP. You'll be able to lift more. Um, and you'll be able to run longer distances. So that's why a lot of coaches and athletes of basketball players, soccer players, and football players or runners always tell them focus on your breathing. Um, even karate experts know this. Even in yoga you see this. Focus on your breathing because um, you'll make ATP, which gives you energy. Also, it helps you become flexible. Um, so breathe in a lot and you'll have a lot of benefits because, again, you'll break down glucose completely in the mitochondria to get the most ATP energy. All right, let's do a quick check for understanding. Um, try to solve this right here. This is the image, or these are the images you want in your packet. Uh, you want to draw these in there. Pause it, and let's see how we did. All right, so on the left, you have photosynthesis. You guessed it, and you have the chloroplast. This is a chloroplast structure. Again, remember what you give plants. Light goes in, water goes in, carbon dioxide goes in. Those are the reactants or ingredients. And then they make oxygen and glucose for us. And you have the equation on the bottom side right here. You have light, water, and carbon dioxide. Again, the three things that go in. And they give us oxygen and glucose, the two things that come out. Over here you have the mitochondria structure. And this is a process of cell respiration where glucose comes in and oxygen comes in. And we break down glucose to produce uh, carbon dioxide, water, and ATP. Remember, 36 ATP in the mitochondria. And you have the equation here. Again, what goes in is on the left side, oxygen plus glucose. And then you get ATP, water, and carbon dioxide. And that's it. Easy.